What's up, folks? Welcome back to the Fast Break Kids. I am Wiley here with Jared, and it is always a pleasure to do our rising and falling. Jared, the month of June has ended. Happy birthday, and we are moving forward by going backwards and talking about the greatest moments and maybe lowlights that we saw throughout the month. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things from the beginning of the month that we sometimes forget. And I'm going to start it out with one that we probably forget happened in this month. And so the first one would be falling. He's already on the board, Paul Pierce. Jared, we need to talk about it on the show. It was embarrassing to see. It was surprising, but not surprising at the same time because this man really knows how to make himself look like an idiot. And he really did it to his, his legacy. Yeah. He crapped all over his legacy, literally, Jared. Tell the people why. Well, Paul Pierce, back in the whatever, I forget what finals it was. It was back when he was with Boston. Seven or something. With Kevin Garnett and uh, Ray Allen. Formative years there. Big championships. Did things that they said that they couldn't. Well, Paul Pierce had a moment where he went down with an injury. And the whole stadium lost its breath. They right. lost one of their core players, one Keep of their beloved He's a well-respected, the, probably, I mean, he was the, the scorer on that team. He, he'd he been with Boston his whole career. Which is hard to imagine now because he's such an it, idiot. It now. is. It is still hard but, to imagine. So he goes down with an injury, and the man is taken out on a wheelchair. Do the thing. I mean, he's just like, he's yeah. like, oh, uh, like, oh, uh, like, dude, like, he's like an invalid now. Like, yeah, like, back. guys, we just lost Paul Pierce, mm -hmm. and he lost his legs, and then, what do you know? How many minutes later, Paul Pierce <laughs> returns triumphantly, Ooh. the crowd goes wild, the stadium comes unglued, they come back, or they, they has a monster the rest of the game, right. he scores a bunch of points. They win the series. NBA Finals Championship. Yeah, Paul history. Pierce. Hero history. Though many were skeptical, myself included. Considering how quickly he came back from a knee injury? You don't get taken out on a wheelchair and come back in minutes and play a phenomenal game. You just don't do that. No. You just don't. It doesn't happen. All right? No. Well, it's been revealed to us by the man himself. On a strange platform. I like... like on the way Post out. Game. On the way out, too. It was no, it was pre-game. It was on was the way it? out into to transitioning to the game. And he says, I got a, I got a confession to make. I have a confession to make. And I'm gonna I'm gonna paraphrase this. I needed to poop. I pooped in my pants a little bit, and I needed to get taken out to take care of that. He did not get injured. He pooped his pants. <laughs> what? That's something you hold on to like cold death, like to to the grave. He took a dump in his pants, and he thought, "Ah, what the heck? I'm such an idiot already. I make such a fool of myself already." Might as well let that cat out of the bag. That was like the last remaining this part like, of his life. That was like respectable. Dude, it's like, it's like, oh, you know, like his whole career, people were constantly getting on because he was like a black hole offensively. Right. He'd take all the shots. And then it was like, well, dude, you had this one shining moment in the finals. Like, this is the greatest moment of your career easily. And then you just say, like, what was he drinking beforehand or something? Why? Like Jalen, it wasn't even like Jalen Rose and Chauncey were like, "What yeah, happened? Yeah, yeah. What happened?" Yeah. He was just like, "I got a confession to make." I have a confession you know, like, to make. Th this is like the anniversary of when this happened. That was what they they were like celebrating. Celebrating, they were like, dude, this is amazing. They was like, "I got a confession." The guilt <laughs> must weigh on these people. These people, <laughs> there's oh. secrets we've never learned about things. Because it, it, even though you know that these things <laughs> weigh on their he hearts. He was walking past like a father and his son. And the father's like, son, there goes Paul There Pierce. goes that man. He has superhuman healing ability. Yeah. And he came back and won that series. And the whole time Paul's like, I really just pooped my pants. Yeah. Oh, man, I hope they don't find out I actually pooped my pants. 
goes out there and tells everybody about it. <sighs> All right, moving from one crappy situation to the next. Oh. Jared, it's time Why to officially Lido. bury the Knicks. The Knicks, in the words of Stephen A. Smith, a huge Knicks fan. The New York Knicks, it's over. They, have, they no longer are the team in New York. Brooklyn has taken it from them, stripped them easily, but naked in front of the world, and they have nothing to cover themselves but Julius Randle, Bobby Portis, Alfred Payton, and Wayne Ellington. Watch them just Ladies and gentlemen, watch the them New soar. York Knicks. Check watch this out. Check, not only, not only, not only did they, they, they... I mean, we gotta go back. We gotta go back in time to really, really capture the horror that Knicks fans are feeling today. Look, it's tough being a Suns fan, all right? It's bad. But let me tell you something. At least we didn't go back and trade our best player for nothing. They traded Kristaps Porzingis with the idea that we're gonna have room for two max guys. All right, here we go. They're loading up. Free agencies coming around. The entire year was Durant going to the Knicks. The Knicks fans are like, dude, we don't even care how bad we are. We're gonna get top pick, we're gonna get Durant. Right. Does not go as planned. Adrian Rojanowski reporting that Kevin Durant is in fact headed to Brooklyn to join Kyrie Irving and DeAndre Jordan. Durant right. and Kyrie Irving instead choose to go 20 minutes away from New York Knickerbockers land over to Brooklyn, mm -hmm. plunging the knife in, even mm -hmm. and twisting it, therefore having nobody. And apparently, reports were stating that the Knicks said they weren't sure about giving Kevin Durant the max deal. They were prepared. They were they 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 were prepared to not give him the max deal and offer that to him. How stupid can you be? <laughs> well, that was my question, Stephen. A People are like, oh, is he ever going to be the same player? Guys, he's not a high flying slam right, dunker. Right. He is a 6'11 jump shot making tarantula and... who can shoot from anywhere. Yeah. You could put him in a chair and he'd average 12 points a game. He'd still be taller than the shit. Yes. So they, they, and they do that. And then they say, hey, we, it's okay. We're gonna we're gonna be able to <laughs> stay competitive with who we're picking up. I listed off the people that were their top picks. The worst part is, and I told you about this when I saw you the other day. I don't know what they were thinking. Social media, what social media? You have to be very careful in social media these days with your fan base and everything, because everybody analyzes everything. The New York Knicks. Just like minutes after they blow it and it's official, Kevin Durant is not coming. Mm -hmm. What do they do? Their Twitter handle shoots out a picture celebrating Pride Month. They're saying, hey guys, Pride, it's time to celebrate. Guys, look, I'm not even getting into some political thing about our thoughts and views on that whole thing. I'm just talking about straightforward. You had fans on there saying, what are you doing? Not now. Like, this is, we're, we're uh, well, let's just say this. It's the only thing they're going to be able to celebrate for a while because this thing is bad. All right, and we'll the see. month's already over, so they can't even celebrate that anymore. All right. Rising. Sammy Salo. Now, hang with me here, okay? I don't know who this guy is either, all right? He's a hockey player. But ESPN, a couple weeks ago, released this article about the most manliest injuries that hockey players have sustained and come back from. And I'm, I'm, I'm interested. I'm not a big hockey guy, but I'm interested. There's going to be some ball sacks. I, I'm clicking scrolling down. Sammy Salo apparently was well known for, he, he had the injury bug, like his whole career. Okay. This is in the, the, the finals, the Stanley Cup finals. The yeah. man takes a slap shot to the junk, okay? Takes one to the junk, <laughs> ruptured testicle. What happens? He comes back into the game, 
comes back in the next game, and the fans are out there chanting balls of steel. What? What? Dude, he took a slap shot. No. Yes. Ruptured. Ruptured. Ruptured his ball. Ruptured. Freaking knuckle puck. <laughs> Kaboom! That you know how, remember, remember, I, you know what I heard? You ever heard, heard about Joe Theismann, about how everyone in the stadium could hear <laughs> the breaking of his femur? <laughs> and LT's like, get over here now! Dude, I heard that fans in the stadium heard the sound of a nut cracking. <laughs> Skakam! Boom! <laughs> <laughs> this is real. You can look it up. It's amazing. What did they do to you? What happened to you to make you do that? Oh man. I think the words ruptured testicle <laughs> should be should be uh, struck out from any record book. I don't ever want to hear those words ESPN. ever again. Nonetheless. Balls of steel. Balls of steel. Hockey fans, God bless them. He's like a role player, too. If it was Gretzky, I'd be like, Gretz, shoot him up with some, shoot his deal with some numbing and get him out there. He's the he's the great one. But what's this guy's name? Slamming Sammy? <laughs> Sammy Salo? Dude, slamming Sammy's nutsack. It's blasted. <laughs> All right. That's awful. So there's that. All right. Falling. Le'Veon Bell. Le'Veon Bell. New deal with the New York Jets. Just signed for a bunch of money. Sat out the entirety of last year. Thanks, Le'Veon. I have you in fantasy football. Um, he's with the Jets now. Fucking magic. Had a uh, had an issue. He called 911 stating that he uh, was robbed. $500,000 worth of jewelry was robbed by two women he brought back to his house or wherever he's living. And they stole his money after he left. Or his jewelry. His jewelry, sorry. And he... And they asked him, what did they look like? And they're like, what were they wearing? He's like, nothing. They were in my bed. <laughs> and that... And so I don't even know if they found him or not, but basically Le'Veon Bell got robbed by some women who came over and get dabbed on. Just, just goes to show you, get dabbed on Le'Veon. You know, when you you bring strange women over, they're gonna get your jewelry. Five hundred thousand dollars worth of jewelry, and I think it was like four items. I heard they how you ruptured his balls. That's what I heard. Yeah. <laughs> it's a serious problem going around. Moving forward, rising! Jared, it's our boy. It's the man, Stefan hey. Marbury. Starbury! Let me tell you something right now. This guy could not be more of a legend in China. We've mentioned him several times. It just keeps getting bigger, though. He plays, wins championships, wins MVPs, then gets his own museum. His own museum. You heard that correctly. Dedicated to him. Then he gets his own, like, documentary, or, like, no, maybe it was a play based on his life. It was either a movie or a play based on his life. Okay. In, obviously being performed in China. Now he has officially retired. Boom, head coach. He's coaching in the Chinese basketball league. Really? This guy, you talk about like a, a, a complete switch. Like I've never seen anybody, like he was not maligned, but he was, I mean, he he's was washed out. And he's washed out. Yeah, everyone was like, okay, forget about him. Right. I mean, he, it's just, it's, it's cool. I'm glad for him. I know. He loves it over there. You know what? And it's. You can look past the obvious physical comedy of the fact that you've got this probably, what is he, 6'4"? 
I think he's shorter than that. Six, six foot two at the least. Black, bald man <laughs> walking around China. and But he's like home. You can look past right. that for a second and say, he's home. that's kind of cool that he found a place that like really where he solidified of his legacy. Him. Yeah, they, they, they love him. That's cool. Him. I'm happy for him. I'm happy for Starbird. He donned a Suns jersey at one Stephane. point in his career. He donned a Suns jersey at one point in his career. Happy for him. This last this one. one. Here we go. This last one. This uh, falling Derek Tucker. I like how you wrote his name on the back. Because of the I paper didn't want to forget it. Derek Tucker. Rupture his is ball. Oh, not quite. He plays football for Texas A&M. He's actually a really good player, apparently. Um, was arrested. I'm not joking. This is the real headline. He was arrested for fighting a guy over tacos. Okay. I haven't lost any Assault. Res- I haven't lost any respect yet. Like, I, they don't even have the specific <laughs> details. Uh, we just know that he fought someone over tacos. Tacos, physically over tacos, physically or physically no, 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 fought no, 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 someone. No, no, no. I mean, like over, like it was like an argument. It was an argument about tacos. That's what I was something. I, it's something to do with an argument that they had about tacos. I mean, I realized. I, I mean, I, I peaked. I peaked with Sammy. I really did. You should have gone with Sammy I last. Kept him last. He ruptured his ball <laughs> and kept playing. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just so excited. To get him up on the board. Do you think it's shaped like a puck now? Dude. <laughs> dude, honestly, do you think it's shaped more like a puck? All right, first up, I had Paul Pierce. Oh, okay. Boink. Pooped his pants. That's an easy one. Um, next up, uh, Thin Ice. We're going to go in the middle here. James Jones. So, James Jones, general manager of the Phoenix Suns, former player. He's either a genius. He's trying to get or, cute with it, man. Or he's an idiot. He's trying to get cute with it. I don't know. I don't know if he's a genius. I don't know if he's an idiot. This is we're gonna. This next season is going to tell if we win eighteen games or if we win forty games. Probably won't win forty or above. I think. Look, if we can get to thirty, a little over thirty, maybe that's a win. I mean, we're uh, we're officially not the laughing stock of the league anymore. At least, right. at no, least we're not the alone. Have certainly taken that. We're not alone at the uh, substrate, bottom of the barrel. Right. So that's good. We'll take, we'll take that. All right. Next up, falling, the death of Dog the Bounty Hunter's wife, Beth Chapman. No. R.I.P. In peace. Legend, guys. If you don't know about Dog the Bounty Hunter, <laughs> the Bounty Hunter. Huh? That was the theme song. Yeah, guys. Dog the Bounty Hunter was this terrible show that aired on A and E. Um, it was about these uh, this family in Hawaii that they were bounty hunters. And when I say terrible, I mean you know, you watch it and you're just like, you're just like. <sighs> Dang, yes, I'm going to watch this. You flip it over to Sports Center and some guy ruptures his nuts out and you're like, that's, I missed that? Oh, I missed the testicle. Lit, dude. Yeah, it was a, it was a decent show. Dog, our, our hearts go out to you. Yeah, no, Your family terrible. feel terrible. Um, so, yeah. Okay, uh, Luke P. from The Bachelorette. The man is rising. Dude. dude. Okay, so unbelievable. Let's chart out the the flight path. That is not a Petey the pilot joke of Luke P. Okay, from start to, okay. to finish. Do I okay? need to get some strings and no, no, it's not going to be. It's it's only one man. Listen, okay. So Luke P. comes on the show. He's jacked guy. That's his thing. There are certain profiles that are fit. On this show, there's cool guy, there's jacked guy, there's sensitive guy. He was he there's was not jacked a lot guy. Of transformation that usually takes place. What? There's not a lot of transformation that typically takes place with these guys or women. Like no, it's they're not evolving. They've landed squarely on the obtuse platform. That, However, they that, are at the beginning. They are at the yeah. End. They're there, and that's the way they're going to be for life, unfortunately. But 
Luke P came on. He was Jack guy. And in the beginning of the show, uh, you don't get too deep into these uh, guys' lives because there's too many. There's too much FaceTime that needs to right. go around. There's not enough camera time for for every guy. So moving forward, people are getting whittled down. Luke P sticks around, and he starts to get into it with a few of the guys. From that, that kind of snowballs into this this whole thing, this dynamic that's placed in the house where all of the remaining guys are pitted now against Luke P, and Hannah is placed sort of on the wayside. And all this time, it's very complicated because Luke P can't seem to get out of his own way. He right. can't come out of his robotic, I want to be the guy that she wants me to be instead of I want to be myself mode that he was in. And so... It sort of nothing. Nothing was happening. He was very benign. There was nothing to to, to hold on to. Right. You couldn't really take sides. He was dead in the water. You couldn't really take sides with him because there was nothing to go off of. He didn't expose any part of his inner being. It was all just this weird. Like when anybody I said, went at him, he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop, 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 stop. like back up, back up, back up, arms back. length. Right, right. Like I, I, I may have said that. Uh, but let me finish. Let me just can it? Can I let good a hook? Can I? <laughs> yeah, that's the way. I, he could not, could not articulate no. his thoughts or support an argument. He was no, hopeless. Was okay. Zoom forward. Now we're in week. I'm gonna say week seven, spilling over into week eight is when things really started to crescendo into what they are now. <laughs> okay. Luke P has officially embraced. Heel hood. Heel hood. He is a heel. He is embraced that he is somewhat of a villain. He's embraced. He's embraced what he wants to be. He's which finally is, opened up. He's opened he's a up. Boy now. He's opened up to the fact that he doesn't give a flipperoni <laughs> about anybody else in the house except for Hannah, which. If we're being honest, it's, it's probably fine. it's probably how this is supposed to work. It is, it but is. in Bachelorette land, everything's twisted up, and it's not reality. You it's gotta be nice to the guys who are trying to steal the girl that you like in this game. Otherwise, they won't like you, and you'll get kicked off because you like her more than you like them. How dare you? Facts. Those are facts. Okay. He's embraced the fact that he's a heel. He, he is he's, defending himself. He's outwardly cheering when guys have to go home. He has given up on trying to be just like that. Nah, like he's trying to be. He's not even. It's it's amazing. It's amazing how it's amazing much he's transformed. To watch the transformation. So as we said, this caterpillar has become a butterfly. Beautiful. Before our Beautiful, eyes. jacked butterfly. And like we said, the guys and people don't typically evolve on this show. He has evolved a little bit. And I'm really appreciating it because the other guys are pretty boring. It's pretty stupid. This would be a boring it's, season. It's like they let some normal, jealous, sometimes angry guy onto the set of the show where everybody else is like just like go with it man like just go with the flow right. she wants to bungee jump naked out of, I respect that right dude. up next to another dude who's also naked and it's not you Shh, come on man come on man lighten up come on okay be progressive so yeah there was that okay alright next up Max Kellerman falling <laughs> listen no did you see what did you see what, Max Kellerman? This has nothing to do with the fact that he gave Stephen A. Smith a jersey with Julius Randle written scribbled on it. Funny. Pretty funny. But no, the man will not stop farting. Did he fart again? He farted again, and it was saucy. <laughs> it sounded piped in. <laughs> so there's either an, a disgruntled... Uh, somebody... There's either a disgruntled audio engineer or something like that, <laughs> or Max <laughs> Kellerman is ripping <laughs> off these. The boom mic guy? Is <laughs> dropping down yeah. there. Whoever it is, they're belting these things out. <laughs> but they're but they're just they're just low volume enough on TV through broadcast to not catch any attention. It's very mm. interesting. Very interesting. Mm. Fartgate continues. All right, and finally, rising Chef Rush. I believe is his name. He is a White House chef. I showed you this guy. Yes. Absolute 
unit. This guy is huge. It just got done. Just got dark, dark outside. Dark so Chef light Rush. changed. Chef it's Rush like outside. It's like blue on that side and like yellow He's on all this boom. side. Boom. 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 It's all dark. Dude, okay. Chef Rush. Um, there he is. Man, Gosh, he looks like Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield. With a little Ving Rhames in there. A little bit of Ving Rhames. That's a great observation, Wiley. Guy's huge. Cooks food over at the White House. He must be real good at what he does. Good for him. Yeah. Um, and that's all I've got. Guys, well, uh, that's what happened in the month of June in that our world. It. That was it. That was, no, that was nothing else. <laughs> that was nothing happened else in the rest <laughs> of the world. Um, do you have anything else you want to say? Dude, I think, look, I, I've only got one thing to say. Don't, it better not be a ruptured when nutsack. When you're uh, <laughs> walking the streets, you better protect yourself at all times. Okay? Knuckle pucks. Get that knuckle puck downstairs. Those knuckle pucks will ruin you and your, your entire family line. Balls of steel. Balls of steel. Let me tell you. Slamming Sammy says. Okay. He ain't slamming no mo. No. Got so, him. uh. <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, we really appreciate your. Com- well, we don't get a lot of comments, so comment. Tell us. Don't talk say to that. Us. Well, talk to us. Tell us. Come on. I really want to hear from what you guys have to say. I want to know what you guys like. What did we miss? What do you guys want to hear from us? What do you want to f- see from us? Comment. Subscribe. Like. Tell everyone you know if, if you, you really like enjoy. the video. If you if you like the video. If you like, I mean, how could you not? But. That's just me, totally unbiased. Uh, for Jared, I'm Wiley. This has been the Fast Break Kids. Keep it clean, keep it fresh, keep it fun. We'll see you next time, guys. I don't know. I don't know if you, you noticed the bags under my eyes, but.